The SpaceX Starship is easily one of the most pivotal inventions of our lifetime. And that's saying a lot, because some pretty spectacular things have been invented in the past few decades. But Starship is a technological revolution that can extend the range of human possibility further than it has ever gone before. This removes barriers that have held back our space exploration programs for decades. By combining a super heavy cargo capacity with rapid reusability, the Starship allows us to travel to places we've never been and do things we have never done before. There's very little precedent for a vehicle like this aside from maybe the first sailing ship and the first passenger airplane. And we're getting pretty close to the day when the Starship makes its mark on history. We're not there yet, but we are close enough that Elon Musk took the opportunity to show the world what he and the SpaceX team have been up to over the past couple of years. And if that wasn't enough, the follow-up announcement of the Polaris project has taken things to the next level. Not only does this give us a preview of how SpaceX will manage their first human spacewalks, Polaris also sets the stage for the first crewed flight of the Starship. We've got a lot to dig into today, so let's get going. On February 10th at the Starbase testing facility, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk held a live presentation to update everybody on the progress with the Starship rocket and his personal aspirations for colonizing Mars. It's been almost two years since the last time he did this. One of the things that Elon spoke a lot about was the launch tower for the Starship, also referred to as the Mechazilla by Elon on Twitter. But during the presentation, he mostly referred to it as Stage Zero, stressing that the tower was just as important and complex as the booster and the ship. They need all three for this idea to work. Prior to the event, we did see the tower use its chopstick arms to pick up the ship and place it on top of the booster section, which is pretty dope already. Elon spoke a lot about the importance of the aspect of rapid reusability, calling it the holy grail of spaceflight. He then says that SpaceX are aiming to aspirationally land on the robotic arms of the tower. So it sounds like even Elon is still not convinced this can work effectively, at least not yet. Elon joked that if the booster does come down too hard and shear off the arms, then it would be a farewell to arms. But SpaceX are very clearly counting on the tower catch system to pan out in the long term. Elon was saying that they expect the turnaround time to refly each booster to be as little as one hour, while a ship would be ready to launch again within six hours of landing. Elon talked about the new heat shield for Starship, which is much different than what we are used to seeing on a vehicle like the Space Shuttle. The SpaceX design is a very precise network of hexagon tiles, that they produce at a facility nicknamed the Bakery. Because Starship is made from stainless steel, the body already has a very high heat tolerance on its own. So the heat shield itself does not have to be nearly as thick as a conventional lander. Elon says that they took a lot of inspiration from roofing tiles when designing the Starship heat shield, and adds that every aspect of the heat shield design is to make it robust enough to support rapid reusability and ensure low cost per flight. We got our first confirmation about how the Starship would refuel in orbit. We've always known that the Starship would have to dock with a tanker before it would be able to travel as far as the moon or Mars. And previously, it had been widely expected that the two ships would do a kind of ass-to-ass -ass connection. But luckily, we now know that there will be an attachment point on the backside of the ship. So the opposite of the heat shield, and that long vertical connection point will allow for the ingress and egress of propellant. Elon says that it is mostly the supply of liquid oxidizer that will need to be topped off for a long-range Starship flight. The Raptor engine version 2 was on full display at the event as well. We can very clearly see that it is a more simplified design this time around. We could almost call Raptor 1 a prototype and Raptor 2 the finished product because the first engine looks like an absolute rat's nest by comparison. Elon is saying that the max thrust output so far from the new Raptor is 247 tons and will probably operate for launches at around 230 tons of thrust. Elon thinks they can eventually push this engine to operate at 250 tons of thrust. 
The production rate of the Raptor 2 is going to be about one engine per day, and that lines up pretty close with the company goal of building one full stack Starship per month, which would need 36 of these Raptors plus three or maybe six of the vacuum optimized variants. Moving on to more launch based operations, Elon says that both Starbase and Cape Canaveral present options for developing Starship. He confirms that there will be a production facility at Launchpad LC-39A, where Elon says they are already approved from an environmental standpoint for orbital launches, and worst case scenario, that would be the location for a first orbital Starship attempt. Elon says that the FAA should approve Starbase for orbital launch in March, but he doesn't get much info from the agency in the meantime. Either way, Elon says that he is highly confident that they will get to orbit this year. The plan for year one is basically to test the system using Starlink launches as the proof of concept, which is a really nice advantage that SpaceX have. They don't need to convince anyone else to put their payload into an experimental rocket. They can just fly their own satellites until it is well proven that the system works. Elon says, that SpaceX are optimistically hoping to test the orbital refilling system towards the end of next year. But he concludes by saying that the primary focus of SpaceX right now is getting the Starship to orbit and then proving their return method for the booster and the ship. All right, now to Mars. We also heard Elon Musk talk a bit about his vision for Mars, but he has yet to lay out any practical details about how that might happen. So Elon's ultimate goal with the Starship program is to eventually move 1 million tons of cargo from the Earth to Mars. That's how much stuff he thinks we will need to form a self-sustaining city on the Red Planet. And by self-sufficient, he means that if ships were to stop arriving from Earth for whatever reason, then the Mars city could continue on indefinitely. He also stressed that settling Mars at first will not be a fun time. Elon said it would be cramped, difficult, dangerous, and very hard work. He also added that you might die in the process. According to Elon, we should look at Mars like a fixer-upper of a planet that someday could be made as comfortable as Earth. And of course, Elon gave his standard talk about how we need to make human life multiplanetary while the window to do so is still open. It might remain open for a very long time, but it might also be very limited, and therefore we have to make our move as soon as possible, just in case. But again, he gave very few technical details on how that happens. He mused that for medium duration crewed Starship missions of one to two weeks, the HLS moon landing, for example, SpaceX could probably scale up the life support system that they use in the Dragon capsule. But in terms of providing life support for a six month Mars transit, he basically said they'll need to invent something new, but not quite sure what that is yet. As if all of that wasn't enough. On February 14th, we got the announcement of the Polaris program. This is a brand new initiative led by billionaire tech entrepreneur Jared Isaacman. We might remember Jared as the force behind the SpaceX Inspiration4 mission last September that sent a crew of civilians into orbit in a Dragon capsule for two days. Jared served as mission commander for Inspiration4 because in addition to being a tech billionaire, he is also an experienced pilot who has performed in air shows for decades and in 2009 set a world record for circumnavigating the globe in a jet plane, completing one lap around the Earth in just under 62 hours. Jared's history of overachieving continues with Polaris, which boasts some very lofty goals. There are three missions on the Polaris docket, and the first, named Polaris Dawn, is set to launch as early as the fourth quarter of 2022. Polaris Dawn will again use the Falcon 9 rocket and Crew Dragon capsule to take Jared and his crew into orbit, but this mission will take full advantage of the Falcon 9 and Dragon's maximum performance, flying higher than any SpaceX mission to date and endeavoring to reach the highest Earth orbit ever flown. This super long distance orbital path will take the crew through portions of the Van Allen radiation belt where Polaris Dawn will conduct research with the aim of better understanding the effects of spaceflight and space radiation on human health. But there's more. At approximately 500 kilometers above the Earth, the crew will attempt the first ever commercial 
extravehicular activity with SpaceX designed space suits, a spacewalk in other words. The entire crew of four will be using the SpaceX EVA suits to survive and work in the vacuum of space. Since the Dragon has no airlock, the entire capsule will depressurize for the walk and then repressurize again afterwards. The new EVA suits are an evolution of the Crew Dragon flight suits that we all know and love. The development of this suit and the execution of the EVA will be important steps towards a scalable design for spacesuits on future long duration missions. And lastly, the Polaris Dawn crew will be the first to test Starlink's laser-based communications in space, providing valuable data for future space communication systems necessary for missions to the moon, Mars, and beyond. As far as the second mission for Polaris, that is still up in the air. All we really know is that the plan will evolve based on the results of the first mission, something that will build on whatever they discover on Polaris Dawn. It's the third Polaris mission that is particularly interesting. This is already being billed as the first crewed flight for the Starship. We don't know when this will happen or what the mission parameters will look like, but in an interview with Tim Dodd at the Everyday Astronaut, Jared Isaacman confirmed that the Starship will be crewed for the entire duration of the mission. So the ship will launch and land with people on board. This is significantly different than the plan for the lunar starship that will bring people to the surface of the moon on the Artemis 3 mission. That ship will be uncrewed when it launches from the Earth and will only ever land on the moon with people inside, which is much, much easier to do than landing on the Earth. That is going to be one hell of a ride. Of course, SpaceX can't even launch the first orbital test flight of the starship without approval from the FAA. And it's just come in as we are researching this video, the FAA are now pushing back their timeline for the Starship Environmental Review to the end of March. This started out with an end date of December 31st, 2021, then jumped to February 28th, 2022, and now we are at March 28th, 2022. Without this approval, SpaceX cannot launch to orbit from their test facility in Boca Chica, Texas. Elon has said that as a last resort, they could still launch Starship to orbit for the first time from their facility at LC-39A in Cape Canaveral, Florida. That site is approved for orbital space launches, obviously. But SpaceX have already built the necessary launch and landing infrastructure for Starship at Boca Chica, and that took them a very long time to do. So packing up and moving to Florida is really going to be a massive setback to the program and we really hope it never comes to that. When do you think the first crewed flight of the Starship is going to happen? I'm thinking 2025 sounds about right, but drop your theories below. Before we go, I'd like to extend a huge thank you to our newest patrons. You can see them on the screen now. You are all fantastic people, and we appreciate your support. If you'd like to join us on Patreon, check out the link in the description. There are some cool perks in it for you, but more than anything, you'll receive the eternal gratitude of everyone here on the Tesla Space team, and know that you are helping us out on our quest to make the best and most informative videos possible. For more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company, in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up, it's theteslaspace.com. And make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. Also, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content. As always, if you wanna to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.